This is a crank that's been sent in and it's from a Royal Enfield, an Indian Enfield uh, 500 bullet engine which uh, the owner, he wants me to just check this crank out, split it and see what the big end is like and I suppose uh, if the crank pin's alright maybe go as far as fitting a new floating bush or uh, you could even perhaps just ensure that the one in there is okay but by the time you split it you might as well put a new one in anyway for what they cost and I'm going to just spin the crank now and see we've got a rise and fall of one thousandth of an inch there on that gauge and a similar amount on that gauge but in the case of this crank they're going in opposite directions so we've actually got an overall run out of two thousandths of an inch with those needles going in opposite directions but that doesn't matter because two thousandths of an inch is very respectable and whether the um, camera will pick this up or not as I spin the crank you can actually see the gap in the flywheels between the flywheels open and close very very slightly as the crank is rotated as well and even to a lesser degree it may possibly pick up that one flywheel is rising against the other and vice versa as it's rotated but if I can get figures like that on those main shafts after I split it and put it back together that will be fine so this is just a sort of reference for what this crank was like before and I'll be splitting it checking the big end probably fitting a new floating bush and then putting it back together and truing it and aiming for a respectable run out figure or maybe no run out at all if I'm really lucky uh, once it's all done right well here we see that um, crankshaft from the 500 Indian bullet split and I've had a good look at everything the crank pin is fine that's little more than a little bit of um, polishing either side of the part that doesn't make any contact with the floating bush there's no discernible wear or anything to worry about on that and this is the floating bush that came out of it which appears to be in very good shape and it fits on there nicely with no discernible play and here's the conrod it's out to race for the big end looking to all intents and purposes like new we fit that over the bush we've got minimal side to side play and no discernible play in the big end in fact see the conrods picking the bush up with it when i'm taking there we are it's brought the bush with it that's how good a fit they are against each other and i'll just put the camera down a sec while i get that out of there because what i want to do next there we are is demonstrate i've actually got a brand new floating bush here and this one is a very marginally closer i wouldn't say tight fit on the crank pin and then if we put the conrod on there again it's a little bit closer a little bit tighter but what you don't want with these big ends is you don't want to make the floating bush unable to do just that and float it wants to spin freely uh, between the crank pin and the outer race in the conrod uh, i would say if the side to side play there is any less it's only a few thou less notice how the floating bush came off with the conrod again and um, it's not a tight fit in the conrod but it's tighter than the other one of the two I've got to say I might prefer the fit of the original because another thing that we have to consider 
is obviously oil gets pumped into the big end and through the big end to oil the bore and the piston and the main bearings as well as the big end itself and if you have too tight a fit it's not going to float on the oil as well as it would if it's a slightly slacker one um, personal preference I think for me would be to use this one but I'll speak to the owner and I'll give him the choice and it's obviously up to him if he wants to tell himself he's got a brand new floating bush in there I'll fit that one if he's uh, happy to go along with what I suggest we use this one and then um, obviously put the crank back together and re through it and that'll be job done so I'll speak to the owner and then find out what he would like me to do with this and either way I'm sure I'll be putting it back together and then we'll check it out and uh, true it up and hopefully finish the job off one way or another a little later also in addition to what I've just uh, discussed about the big end there before I put it back together I'll also well I have also checked there's a built-in oil pressure relief valve in some of these crankshafts the Redditch engines pretty much all had them the singles or at least um, 350cc and upwards and that's it screwed into the inside face of the flywheel behind that screw is a spring and behind the spring is a ball and that is the relief valve and it's in the far end of the timing side shaft and I've just made sure that it's all clean and working and a way to check on an Indian engine if you've got one or on any engine that's got one whether it's working is put something like this rod in you could even use perhaps a pipe off a WD-40 can or something you can actually do it through the quill bolt if you take the quill bolt out the timing cover when the engine's in one piece and just put it in there and just press a little and it should spring should move downwards against the spring about two or three millimeters and spring back nicely and I've also blown it through with the airline and also not only blown the oil passageway right through and out through the crank pin but I've also done it with my finger over the hole there to make the relief valve lift and blow out and also to ensure that it closes properly as well so I'm happy with all that and basically what that relief valve allows to happen is especially say if you've got thick oil or a cold engine and when you start the engine up the big end is such a close virtually tight fit to the crank pin there's nowhere much for all the oil being pumped to go and rather than putting strain on the oil pump drivetrain and gears this relief valve will open and allow any excess oil under pressure to come out through there and then with the engine running and the flywheel spinning centrifugal force throws that oil in fact you can see some streaks on the flywheel there and on that one where the valve has opened and flung the oil by centrifugal force up between the flywheels and around the crank cases and up into the cylinder and lubricated the piston and so on and some people don't like those and they like to close them off and the, the, um, the Indians briefly did away with them but then they went back to them so and Reddit used them all along so that tells me that that's worth having so this one's all clean checked out and in working order so I'm happy with that and uh, the next thing is as I said I'm gonna speak to the owner he can tell me which big end floating bush he'd like to fit in there and I'll put it back together and show it Here's that crank from an Indian Royal Enfield Bullet 500 that um, I've been discussing and uh, I stripped it down at the request of the owner to check the big end and found out that that was in very good condition so I've cleaned everything up and put it all back together and I've been working on it for oh a couple maybe three hours now um, truing it and trying to obviously get any run out to a minimum I'm gonna settle for this um, that clock there 
on the drive side is not moving at all. There's absolutely no run out there at that uh, main shaft. On the timing side main shaft I've got a whisker over three, perhaps three and a half thousandths of an inch. And I've worked, I've tried um, reducing it. What the problem is, we see the high spot is going over top dead centre and the low spot is going around bottom dead centre so it's not a matter of bumping the flywheels and sort of twisting one against the other at mid stroke if you can imagine it's as if at the uh, high point there it's as if that flywheel wants through that way as if uh, as has been discussed in the past like as if you want to knock a wedge in there or lever the flywheels apart but doing that then upsets this gauge and I've, I've tried a few attempts and I always keep coming back to around about three and a half thousandths of an inch overall run out whether that needle doesn't move quite so much as it is there and this one moves a couple of thou whatever I can't get better than that so um, that probably is acceptable and I'm sure that the engine will turn freely with this crank in it it is actually about the same as what we had before I split it just in a slightly different um, way so um, that's as good as I can make that so I think uh, I'm gonna do I've, well I've done the lock nuts up already I've just got to put the little grub screws in against them and that one's done um, so three three and a half thousandths of an inch that's about as good as it gets on this one <laughs> 